Okay guys, I want to make a quick video about this predictive programming that uh, I came across when doing some research on the GLP form. It, uh, it's really kind of cool when you come across these things because after something fairly big has happened and then you can see these things pop up in, in media, TV, movies, music, it gives confirmation to the fact that uh, these things are, are known in advance, planned in advance. Um, and it also sometimes reveals some other clues about some things that will uh, could be happening in the near future and this is no exception. Um, you recall our previous episode about the Dixie brand, uh, no coincidence there that they use the Dixie brand um, advert that we decoded from a couple weeks ago that uh, you know the Dixie brand is the uh, tie into the Confederate flag and it showed black person fantasizing about breaking into store windows and arrests and things of that nature so that was foreshadowed literally the weekend before all this stuff went down this particular one that we came across is quite interesting It's from the year 2000 it's an outer limits episode and I'll, I'll take you through just a couple of the scenes real quick I can't play it for copyright reasons but I will link it down below it is a pretty I mean the acting is a little bit bad but the episode is actually a, a decent episode on its own as far as the storyline it's a little bit cheesy and corny but when you take it into the context of what we see going on right now it's extremely fascinating so the the basic premise of the story is a time travel episode outer limits of course is sci-fi based and so in this particular episode it opens with the the main character Andy here and his friend doing civil war reenactments at Gettysburg and they're playing union soldiers but these guys are definitely from the south and uh, Andy in particular um, takes a moment to uh, display his confederate flag So he takes out uh, 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 his, his uh, phone and asks his friend here to take a picture of him holding the Confederate flag because he has heritage in his family that he is proud of. And so these two guys come, come walking by and start making fun of them and saying negative things about the flag and what it represents. And he gets very offended, of course, because he has family and they almost begin to fight. And his friend here convinces him not to get in a fight. And then immediately after that, um, you have this this character Curtis come up now Curtis is this guy right here he's a mysterious character that comes up in this wagon he's a photographer he has an old 1800s camera and so they're curious about this and the guy offers to take a picture of them and when the guy does take the picture of them they get instantly transported into um, the last days of the Gettysburg battles specifically the um, days leading up to the final battle at Gettysburg so of course it takes them a minute um, to figure out where they're at this character here played by it looks like meatloaf I think it is meatloaf um, shoots one of the people that's with them then they realize okay this is real it's not a joke and so the next you know 20 minutes or so of the episode is, is them um, finding a way to sort of integrate into the Confederate, um, you know, soldiers. They get drafted by the by the Confederates and end up assisting them, even though they were in Union um, reenactment costumes, which caused a lot of problems initially. But they end up finding this Curtis character again in this time period. Of course, they're like, "What's going on? What did you do to us? How did we get here?" And basically, what he tells them is that they're on a mission. So they're trying to figure out what their mission is. Obviously, is to change something in history, and they assume that it's to change the outcome of the war. Or at least the Andy main character does because of his heritage. So he wants to be a part of something and proud of something. So eventually, um, what they end up figuring out, though, is that this character um, Curtis has sent them back because Andy in the year 2013 will end up assassinating this black president at a ceremony where he bans the Confederate flag and so it's interesting because they they go into some detail about this black president and they say that he is you know completely revered by the entire country and basically he is the best president 
So you have this episode made in the year 2000 where somehow they had the creative skills or the knowledge to know that there would be a black president in the year 2013 that he would be banning um, the, the Civil War flag. And I know we're not in 2013. We're in 2015. I get that. There could be two reasons for that. Either number one, they didn't want to make it exactly how it is or it would be too obvious. Or maybe this was supposed to happen in 2013 and things got delayed a little bit with all the other stuff going on in the world. In any case, they had the foresight to make this episode um, and the, the comparisons they make to Obama in terms of him um, is interesting because in this episode they say that he was compared to Abraham Lincoln. And if you recall, uh, when Obama was first elected, a lot of people compared him to Abraham Lincoln in terms of what he was supposed to be doing for race relations. So, you know, that's beyond coincidence that they would be making that comparison for this fictional president to Abe Lincoln and what really took place in 2008 and and on. Now the other interesting part is that at this ceremony in this episode the president is assassinated by the Andy character and that's why Curtis went time traveling back was to show him what war was like to convince him not to assassinate the president. And he's actually successful in that because as the episode goes on, he tries to uh, prevent the Confederates from, from dying in battle at that, at that last stand that they tried to make there, which where they were ultimately unsuccessful. But what happens, though, is somebody else's, a, a real Confederate soldier, is um, time-traveled in his place and ends up shooting the president anyways. And so... You have this Curtis character tell the, the moral of the story at the end, which I found uh, very disconcerting, is he says that, you know, destiny cannot be changed, and the f fate is what it is, and these things are going to happen no matter what you try and do about it. So they're also sending a subliminal message, look, this is the way that it is in terms of the flag burning. And I also wanted to point out real quick that people do have a theory which uh, I don't necessarily subscribe to, but is that the, one of the next major false flags to really kick the, the race war into high gear would be an attempted assassination on Obama, an actual assassination on Obama, or a faked assassination on Obama, which would then be spun in the media that we have all these dangerous right-wing extremists, and that could really set the catalyst for Patriot Act version 3 or... XL or whatever you want to call it. So it's interesting that they're putting this assassination theme in there when a lot of people have been predicting that. And, um, you know, biblically, if you were going to say that Obama was the Antichrist, which I'm not necessarily agreeing with that, but, you know, it does state in the Bible that he would get a grievous head wound and would recover from it um, uh, during the tribulation, if I, if I recall correctly. So it's kind of fascinating that they put all this stuff in here. So if you found this video interesting, uh, please hit the like button down here. Subscribe if you're not subbed. And it would be awesome if you could share the video. Thanks so much.